<laughs> Welcome, Felicity Jones, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Congratulations on this beautiful movie. Um, I'm curious, how did the script find its way to you? Were you familiar with the book on which it was based? Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I I didn't know it actually at all. I um I, I read the script, um, and I thought it was uh, intriguing, um, but it wasn't actually uh, interestingly until I read the book that I felt the kind of full force of the story. Um, and it was in the book that, because it was partly going to be animated, obviously the book gave one a much clearer impression of, of what the story was going to be because it has these beautiful um, uh, 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 drawings in it of, of the tree and, and of the monster. So when you see the book, you have, um, you have a, a stronger sense mm -hmm. of, of the nature of the, of the story. There's kind of a, a, a sad backstory to the book as well, isn't there? I believe, um, was it that Patrick Ness was writing, writing it for someone who was dying of cancer? Yes, so um, uh, it's, it's actually rooted in, um, I'm seeing people <laughs> with teary faces, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's um, been a rough week here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in more ways than one, <laughs> yeah. Um, Yes, very sorry about that. It's <laughs> <laughs> Would you be willing to sponsor my work visa if <laughs> I can't take it? <laughs> Mine too, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, uh, well, it's, um, yeah, it's been a very strange week. Um, <laughs> oh, so I've Patrick's completely lost my train Patrick's of thought, story. I'm sorry. <laughs> Patrick's story was written for, or he started to it collaborate, I think, it with it an artist. It, it was. Well, Siobhan, um, who started the book, it was quite an unusual situation where Siobhan um, started it, and, and obviously you can feel that... I I think and hope the, the authenticity of the story in, in her writing because obviously it was something that she was going through and then um, and then when she died uh, Patrick continued the story um, and, and finished it and it's fascinating to think that it, it could have just disappeared completely and, and it and we would we would never see it so I always think it must be rather wonderful for Siobhan to yeah. think you know somewhere <laughs> wherever she might be that that her story is is here for all of us was she a mother herself or was it not really an autobiographical story she she was yes so it was very much a um I, I feel it was it was her trying to help her children through the experience as you as you see with connor and then working with uh juan a bayona um he is such an amazing director i mean and he's known um really for a lot of his visual work in movies like the orphanage and the impossible uh, but what does he like to work with with actors? Uh, he's oh, everyone would just love him here. Um, he just makes it so easy. I mean, it always seems so obvious. It's like, what's the one thing that's going to make actors feel really comfortable? Oh, probably having a little bit of rehearsal before you get to set, <laughs> um, not just kind of being pushed on in, in front of a crew and, and figuring it out. Is is a lot of the work is done in a rehearsal room. We were in Manchester in back in England, um, and we I, for about two weeks we went through actually we did all of the scenes and we would improvise around them mm -hmm. so we would sort of do if they're um at one point i don't think it was actually in the film there's a scene when they're all around the table and so we did kind of like coming in and sitting at the table and then the conversation and and then leaving and then little moments of of connor and and Lizzie, uh, when he was growing up, him being much younger. So lots of improvisation, um, lots of discussion, uh, lots of eating nice Spanish food, which was good too, <laughs> um, in between. So it was, it, he just he just cares about actors. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't have that attitude. I think some directors sort of see us as puppets or something. Um, he, he absolutely does everything to make you feel comfortable and, 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 and get rid of your self-consciousness. Yeah. You know, lots of actors are good with the technical aspect and then lots of actors are good with actors, but the way he blends them so effortlessly is really impressive. It is, yeah. I mean, it almost feels, it's quite an intimate, it feels quite an intimate story. I don't know if you guys found that. But um, but but actually, you know, then you look at the credits, and it's thousands and thousands of people, and thousands of work has uh, lots and lots of work has gone into it, and um, and I think that was the key. He 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 didn't want any of the emotions to be too sentimental or 
um, or too easy. I think it's, I, I feel like it, he always wanted it to, to have an honesty. Mm -hmm. um, and even, you know, there's even tensions between um, Lizzie and, and, and Sigourney's character and uh, their relationship isn't straightforward. You know, they're still kind of battling it out as mothers and daughters do. So, um, so there's, th yeah, there was a lot to play with. Uh, how excited were you when you found out Sigourney Weaver was going to be playing your mom? Oh, I mean, <laughs> it's bloody awesome. Um, <laughs> she's just, oh, she, you just, it's that image of her from Aliens, isn't it? That I think <laughs> everyone has. <laughs> yeah. um, but she's actually really, she's, you kind of feel like she's going to be quite intimidating, but then when you meet her, she's she's a real kind of hippie, and she's very very um, gentle and, and sweet natured, and um, very much different than from some of the characters that she's played. She's still seven feet tall, though. I mean, that's intimidating. She is. She is. <laughs> yeah, but she's got a kind, kind heart. Mm -hmm. Kind, kind heart. Your parents actually in this movie are Sigourney Weaver and Liam Neeson. So now we know what their child would look like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit on the short side. Though. I know, right? <laughs> good point. <laughs> and Didn't get the good genes. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, we have to talk about the amazing young actor who plays your son, yeah. Louis McDougall, yeah. who, from what I understand, really only had one job on his resume before this, like a small role in Pan. Yeah, which he was so excited about. Every day he'd show us the trailer for Pan. <laughs> he was just like, it was his first film. He was like, oh, I can't believe it's coming out. He was so, so excited. But he, yeah, I mean, as you can see, he just, he's not in any way a kind of stereotypical child actor. He's not, um, he was just fierce about it. He was very, very serious. And he would even do that thing that everyone probably does is like, beat themselves up constantly after after doing a take he'd go like no I could do it better and oh that didn't work and you know he has that he has a real determination to make it really good <laughs> I mean was your chemistry pretty instantaneous or you had that rehearsal time that probably helped yeah we did and we went to see Guardians of the Galaxy um, we went on a family trip uh, <laughs> to go and see it which was rather fun and then we sort of did we often went we went to um, a theme park and we went to a nature reserve and we uh, we actually enjoyed hanging out with each other in, and um, and I think it helps if you feel as comfortable with each other as possible so that you can convey authentically that you know you've grown up together and um i'm curious uh uh i mean obviously i i uh, cancer has probably touched your life because i think it's touched everyone's life to some degree so i don't know if there was personal experience you drew on or if you did any specific research to play this woman yeah i um it, it i was really helped by i mean i sort of like jumped in head first in terms of uh, speaking to women who'd gone through the experience and had fortunately come through it and that they spoke incredibly honestly um, about every aspect of uh, what it was like uh, you know emotionally how it impacted their relationships um, and then the kind of detail the physical detail of of, um, of how chemotherapy affects your body um, and uh, that was I mean that was kind of my my, my main resource and then looking there was a wonderful um photo diary that a husband had done uh, of his wife and and her experience through cancer and chemotherapy and 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 it was a very very honest portrayal of of what they were going through both as a couple but also physically and 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 that was kind of um we just constantly came back to that as a as a reference point and then, and then it was, yeah, I mean, like everyone, I, um, my close, close friends, uh, a, a couple of them have had parents who've uh, died from cancer. And I actually, I, I don't know, on, on some level, I think it was wanting to understand what they had gone through and, and, um, and, and was, yeah, somehow sh hopefully show that experience mm. and, and people could maybe benefit from that in some way. And uh, you're not a mother in real life, as far as I know. <laughs> um, so Don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so also drawing on that, I, I'm, I mean, that's probably a little bit easier. You probably know lots of mothers. It is, but I found it really hard. Really? I was like, oh, God, I'm not maternal enough. What's wrong with me? Um, I, it actually, it was that thing where I, I'd often do a take and it would be way too sweet. 
and it kind of be a bit yeah. fake because often like with my own mother and you know it's it's quite a it's quite an antagonistic relationship sometimes and you have to be quite stern as a parent mm-hmm. you know as a good parent you you kind of you can't let children do whatever they want so yeah. so I, I it was something I definitely wrestled with I definitely just wanted it be to be believable and I think part of the way into it was just to go actually these guys are friends you know she's a single mother she's had him when she was a teenager so she hasn't grown up yet, really. Mm-hmm. She doesn't quite know who she is. So so rather than it being kind of a traditional parent-child relationship, it was much more like they were kind of in it together. They were real comrades. And what ended up being the most difficult part of the shoot? I mean, be it, you know, sort of leaving the character at the end of the day, or maybe there was a particular scene that you struggled with? Um, I don't know. It's always, so, I mean... What do you guys think? What's the? <laughs> I think it's. A, I feel like every bit of the process is is a challenge <laughs> in some ways, isn't it? It's sort of. Um, it's it's. I, I think sometimes you. I mean, you have days with this where we were just on a roller coaster for the day, so that was definitely much mm-hmm. easier. Uh, I think. Um, I think it was trying not to play the illness too much. It's always that thing where you don't want to be too indulgent with that had to be secondary to the spirit of the person and and her just just wanting to 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 live really and um and it all just trying to be as as subtle as possible. I mean your the the last scene, well not the last scene, but sort of your final scene with him where you you know tell him to go ahead and be angry if he wants to, uh, just guts me every time. Um, was that a tough day? Um, did you do a lot of takes? Uh, were you happy to get it over with? Um, it, w- it was, it was a difficult day. I think Lewis, I mean, Lewis was so tremendous <laughs> through <laughs> through everything. He, we, we really kind of lent on each other. Um, and we did, I mean, like anything, it wasn't like the first take and we got it, it was, it was definitely trying different things, but even on the day with Biona, it's quite experimental. Like he plays really loud music um, over these speakers over the whole set. So if you're depending on what the scene is, I mean, sometimes he'd be playing Rihanna, which would be quite fun. But um, <laughs> <laughs> in the in the good times, and then and then he'd play bits of the score that he'd already had composed. So so it, it's quite it's quite quite sort of. Um, it, it's not all kind of smooth take, you know, action, cut, right, moving on. It's, it is a, it's a, it's a, a process of discovery even on the day. Uh, by the way, I heard this movie is already like a huge hit in Spain. And uh, I don't know if you've seen it there with audiences. Um, but, uh, you, you know, is there, do you have any theories as to like sort of the universal appeal of the film? Yeah, I know. I got a text from Bayonne who's like, it's number one in Spain. <laughs> Great. <Yeah. laughs> um, so... I don't. I don't know. I mean, you never know what what hits yeah. an audience, and and also it's different in different countries. That's what's been fascinating. Mm-hmm. Some countries love something, and some countries are like, oh, this is awful. Who would want to see this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think it, it obviously depends on the zeitgeist in yeah. that particular place or the culture, or yeah, who knows. Well, uh, I know Canadian audiences loved it too because I saw it at the Toronto Film Festival and they went crazy for it. But yeah, it seems to it seems to have hit enough. Yeah, it, yeah, it um. Which is good. So you're big in Spain. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I have a couple questions from the audience. Um, There's one from Hilti and Mark. Uh, Wants to know, you've had such an accomplished career. When you look back on your work, what do you think was your single most significant career move? And how has it shaped your career since? Gosh, career moves. (laughs) I I wish there were career moves. (laughs) Um, Oh, I don't know. I think... um, I think it's just being trying to be instinctive. Um, I think it has to come from a connection with the other people. I think you don't make anything, you know, no one does anything on their own, do they? It's through um, collaboration ultimately. So I, I think it's people taking a risk with each other, mm. taking a, a punt on each other and meeting and, and going, actually, we could do something interesting here. And, and we don't know, you know, it's a bit of a, it's always a bit of a risk e- each time, whatever you do. And you started at a really young age, like, I want to say like 11. Um, and I mean, rejection at any age is difficult, but how did you deal with it, you know, as, as a child? Um, oh, gosh. Oh, yeah, I remember <laughs> um, going for things. And then I remember particularly it was uh, going for school plays and then again at university. <laughs> I mean, everyone's gone through this and, and you're 
you just it's I don't know you just never get quite used to it especially when you really want something yeah. and then the next it, it's always that you don't hear for ages that's always the thing it's like oh why don't they just tell me and put me out of my misery rather than like waiting for <laughs> and then it's after week two week three goes and you just think oh this yeah this isn't gonna happen but it's you know it's it's um in a way it sounds like such a cliche but you kind of when things don't always go to plan, like mm -hmm. it's hard at the time, but I think that's when you really, you really improve and, and learn something. I mean, I have to imagine in the last few years, you probably don't ad audition as much, thanks to you know the Oscar nomination and <laughs> movies like Like Crazy and Theory of Everything. Um, I wish that were the case, but <laughs> um, but I know actually saying that, I actually find the aud I I yeah I still auditioned, and actually I think it's quite important mm -hmm. sometimes because it really helps you to focus, okay, w what it is, there's something that happens in that audition process that I actually think is very helpful for finally when you make the film. And also, you know, I think it's important that actors empower themselves in that process. And you also want to know, is this, is this, is this a director who's gonna be of interest? Is this gonna work for both of us? I think sometimes you go into these situations and you're, you're always like, will they like me? You know, and you always put yourself in the position of, 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 of weakness, but actually it's always gonna be a two-way thing. And, and somehow, uh, I think that's a bit of a healthier way of approaching it, that you go, well, well what, what can we do together? rather than, you know, it being a kind of X factor situation, am I gonna be chosen or not, you know. Did you audition for Star Wars? I did, yeah, oh. yeah, I did. I um, met Gareth Edwards, the director in um, in London, and uh, we, we, we were there for ages, actually. Yeah. We did. <laughs> we were. We did a good couple of hours of going through the scene and going over it over and over and over again and trying different things and um, and I just remember really wanting to do it. Yeah. So I was just, yeah, just it's just instinctive. I just just felt like, oh yeah, just what a, what a beautiful part to play. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, but um, Eddie Redmayne just gave an interview where he talked about how he auditioned for Star Wars and didn't get it. Did you give him a hard time about that? <laughs> um, that might have been that would have been a weird experience for us both to have been in <laughs> in, in Star Wars together. Um, it could have been fun. Um, yeah, well, it happens all the time, yeah. you know. You um, obviously you go in for things and doesn't always doesn't always work out. Uh, one more quick question from James Kerr. Uh, what characteristics and or techniques did you admire the most from your fellow castmates in the film? Uh, that's a really good question. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's a great one. That never gets asked. <laughs> um, uh, from, from a monster calls, oh, I think, well, with Lewis, it was his... Um, he just doesn't have a fake bone in his body. Uh, just there's, he doesn't know how to be fake. Um, he, yeah, he never just phones it in or he, he. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's just in, in his soul, I think. Um, and then uh, with Sigourney, it was her, it's always, I'm always fascinated to see um, older actors on set and how they behave because obviously they've got you know, credible amounts of experience and, and just seeing how, she actually said an interesting thing because sometimes going onto set, you know, there's a sort of, everyone's kind of hugging each other and, and, and embracing and, and then, and she said interestingly, you know, sometimes that's quite hard to do because actually you're very vulnerable when you're, especially with something like this, when you're going onto set, you don't want to seem rude and you don't want to seem, you know, like a kind of, annoying prima donna or something but I just thought it was interesting how she was saying sometimes you have to protect that moment when you're you know you're it, there's a fragility to you when you're going on to set and and that it's it's okay not to be everyone's best friend you know sometimes there's that impulse that you want to be liked by everyone and 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 you she was actually interesting in saying you know there's there's you're, you're a bit skinless when you go on to set and that's okay are you a little bummed you didn't get to work with Liam Neeson? I know. I got yeah. He was um he had a strange sort of he was for three weeks in Oxford in a weird suit a CGI suit with um 
uh, weird dots on it. So I just see these images occasionally from Biona showing me what was going on. Um, but we, I, I met him briefly in the read through. We all got together and um, and read through the script very very early on, and he just he just has got that wicked voice. <laughs> um, I want to remind people this movie opens in December um, you have another movie coming out uh, in December as well but that doesn't need any publicity um, <laughs> thank you doesn't. so much for being here and congratulations on such a beautiful thank you very much thanks very much thanks for watching it <laughs>